country. It's so beautiful. It's so different from... Yes, it is. Well, so we're just a vacation trip. Well, it is for you. New country to see and it's enjoy. It's not for you. Oh, it's not that bad. Just one more job one and... One more we'll... job. One more man to send to prison. No, back to prison. Billy Miller escaped, okay, remember? Okay, come on. Come on, honey, the stage is ready to go. Good looking at that watch. It's not gonna make the stage come in on time. Joe, Andy. Hey, Rick, how's it going? Hi, right, Rick. Mr. Cartwright, I. Oh, listen, did you get that horse shot? No, not yet. That mare throws his front foot out a little bit. I was gonna build a special shoe and wait at some on the inside, see if I couldn't correct it. Yeah, it might be a good idea. I hear tell there's a marshal on his way into town. Yes, there is, as a matter of fact. Old friend of mine, Luke Mansfield. Oh, he, he's just coming here for a vacation, Rick. I don't think it has anything to do with you. Luke? <laughs> How are you? Well, finally, after 15 years. Luke, my son Joseph. Joe, of course. How are you? And uh, this is uh, Candy, uh, one of my uh, hands. Candy, how are you? <laughs> Clumsy me. Thank you. That'll be all, boy. She can stand up without your help. Father, if he hadn't caught me, I'd be flat in the dust. He was trying to help. I know what he was trying to do. Marshal, I, I was hoping that... Ben, I brought along a surprise for you. I want you to meet my little girl, Laurie. Father, how many times do I have to tell you I'm not a little girl? Indeed, she's not a little girl. She's a beautiful young lady. Laurie, how nice to see you. Hello. My son, Joseph. Pleasure, man. How do you do? And this is Candy. Ma'am. Now, you boys get the luggage down and the uh, series right over here. Follow me. Thank you very much. Come on, dear. You know, take it easy, enjoy yourself. Well, as a matter of fact, I handed in my resignation a month ago. Now that Gloria's finished school, I thought I'd settle down and make a home for her. Well, and this one piece of unfinished business got in the way. Unfinished business? A man I put in prison a long time ago broke out 10, 12 months ago. We all thought that he went to Mexico. Only last week we heard that he headed this way. Well, since you're no longer marshal, why are you tracking him down? It's a special case, Ben. I'm still carrying one of his bullets in my leg. Father. It's so beautiful here. Can't we just forget about that old Billy Miller? For today, at least. 
Oh, all right. I'm all unpacked. You should see the view from upstairs. There's the cutest little burrow in the corral. <laughs> yeah, he's a cute little one. Total stranger wandered in one day. We're waiting for his owner to come along and pick him up. <laughs> hey, you know something? There's nothing he'd like better than to be fed a big, juicy apple by a pretty little gal. Come on. Can I can feed it? Sure. Oh, she's a sweet child. Bessie is a whirlwind and iron-headed sometimes, but she's a sweet child. Sweet she is, but a child she isn't. Oh, yes, she is, in more ways than one. All those years at school, she's got a lot of growing up to do. Well, all children do, Luke. But uh, tell me about this uh, Billy Miller. He's a very dangerous man, guilty of murder twice over. But all we could prove in court was mail robbery. Ben, in my bag upstairs, I've got $1,000. I'm offering it as a reward for him, dead or alive. Luke, uh, you're a pretty good marshal, so you're going to find out about this sooner or later anyway. Might as well tell you. There's a young fellow in town. Been here about, oh, 10 or 12 months, working at the blacksmith shop. And he never made a secret of the fact that he served time in prison. But we all like him a great deal. Well, that's your privilege. But it's probably a mistake. Well, be that as it may, the reason I'm telling you this is it uh, can't be the same fellow you're looking for, because this one is a... A young'un, but his name is Miller, too. Not Billy Miller, Rick Miller. Could be a relative. When a man's on the run, he always goes somewhere to find somebody for help. Family, maybe. Well, I didn't want to intimate that there was any relationship between... Then I think I'd better ride into town and have a talk with this young fellow. You said it was at the blacksmith shop, huh? Well, yeah, he's at the blacksmith shop. Then I need a horse. Would you just... Yeah, sure, of course. Yes. And then I got to change, I think. Like I was saying, there's a dance Saturday night. I thought it would be kind of a good idea if you were hey, to wait. Hey, wait a minute, you two. I was the one that brought it up first. And the way I figured, I got first digs. Joe? What do you mean you get first digs? It was Candy and I that met her at the stage. I think if anybody gets first digs... Uh, Joe? Uh, Joe, your, uh, your pa is calling. Oh. Yeah, but you think about what I said, huh? See you later. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, Hoss, he's, um, he's about half right. Uh, it was me and Joe that uh, picked her up at the stage. Oh, well, gentlemen, I'm sure there'll be enough dances for everyone. Now, I, I probably shouldn't admit this, but I've never been to a real dance. Oh, yeah? I, I, I've learned how. I learned how in school, but it was always just with the girls. Well, I'll tell you, Lori, this one Saturday night will be somewhat different. <laughs> well, I guess I must have made a mistake. I mentioned Rick Miller. And he immediately assumed that he was related to this fellow that he's tracking. And, boy, he's sure rough on anybody who's ever served time in prison. Well, maybe he's been a lawman too long. <sighs> maybe, but anyway, I'd like you to ride in with Luke, just so Rick knows he still has some friends. Saddle two horse. Oh, the <laughs> biggest problem I have is not breaking a little gal's feet when I step on them. <laughs> you bet. Hey, where are you going, Joe? I gotta go to town. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, take your time. Don't hurry back. So, Lori, what did you do before you came out here? Oh, nothing really, just school. Uh, more oh, competition. Hi, mm -hmm. Rick. Hello, Rick. Yes. Hey, Rick. You could have saved yourself a trip out here, old buddy. I was going to come get that horse tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Candy, but I wanted to come out anyhow. Uh, yeah, I'll bet you did. Hi. I didn't have a chance to thank you properly this morning. Are you Rick? Yes. Hi, I'm Lori Mansfield. Rick Miller. The, re the reason I came out, Miss Lori, is I, I, I'd like to speak to your father. Of course, he's in the house. Come with me. Father, we're just coming in to see you. This is Rick Miller. He wants to talk to you. Well, that saves me right into town. 
I'd be pleasant, please. Go in the house, Laurie. Can't you be pleasant for a minute? He only wants to talk to you. Do as I say. Go in the house. Hope we'll meet again, Rick. Rick Miller. Where'd you do time, boy? Down in Yuma? With your Uncle Billy, or, or is he your cousin? Did you two work it out together before they let you go, boy? No, sir. Did you tell him you had a place ready and waiting for him when he broke out? No, sir. It wasn't like that at all. I want the truth, boy. You remember what it's like down there in Yuma Prison. I can put you right back there. Just like that. Father! Marshal, I came out here to tell you about Billy. He came all the way out here, and you treat him like an animal. What kind of a man are you? You ask me that, ask him. Look at him, sick with fear. It's written all over him. It's the mark of a jailbird. I wouldn't lay a hand on him. Anyway, I told you to go in the house. I know what you told me. Staying right here. Pull yourself together, boy. Nobody's going to touch you. You said you came out here to tell me something. All right, let's hear it. Marshal, I was up in Fernley when Billy broke out. I didn't know nothing about it till he got here. He was all shot up. Been riding for a long time, didn't have no care of medicine. I hit him in a shack up by where I was working. I reckon I shouldn't have done it, Mr. Cartwright, but he was my blood kin, my cousin. There weren't even time to get a doctor. He just kept getting sicker and sicker. He died in a couple hours. I buried him up there, Marshal. Well, now, isn't that convenient? You came all the way out here just to tell me. Father, stop it. Please. Billy had a good reason to want my hide. It's a trap, isn't it, boy? You want to sucker me out there with some tall tale just so Billy could have target practice? No, sir. One sure way to find out, Luke. Whereabouts in Fernley? About three miles northeast of the old Silver Dollar Mine. Yeah, it's a long ride. You'll need company. Candy, Joe, you go along with Luke. And you'll need uh, supplies and bedrolls. Right. We'll get the supplies in town. This is official business. The government will pay for all we need. If it is a trap, we don't want him at our backs. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see that he stays here. When you find that grave, Father, remember to be ashamed. Laurie. You don't understand, dear. When I get back, we'll have a nice long talk. A nice long lecture, you mean? Really? Well, this time I'm not going to listen. Not unless you apologize first. Should be all right, Luke. I think so, Ben. Anybody else's hands, I'd wonder. Maybe later on, you and I can take a little ride around the ranch. Would you like that? See you later. What did you do to Rick last night? Tie him up and lock him in the barn? <laughs> no. What gave you that idea? In the tack room. <laughs> you said he'd... Stay until your father came back. There's no reason to tie him up. Or what are you talking about? <laughs> you went off to do some work. You believed him. Now, why, why couldn't father? Well, we know him. Your father doesn't. We've known him for close to a year. Like him. Can't say I agree with everything he does, like taking in an escaped convict. I don't think that was right, although I can understand it. He was cruel. You're not. No, Laurie. It's not cruel. 
Being a lawman in wilderness territory is pretty rough going. You can't just take every stranger at face value. It might cost you your life. Your father helped make this country a, a fit place to live, and he did it mostly on his own. No one else to depend upon but himself. That still is no reason for him to treat Rick like an outlaw. And a liar. He has no right to play God. That's what he does always with me. I think I was still five years old or something. All right, pass me that plate, would you please? You know, you can't blame a father for wanting his little girl to remain a little girl. Anyway, he hasn't had much chance to see you grow up. You know that, don't you? That was his own fault. Ever since I was little, he's kept me in boarding schools. He's never cared about me, Uncle Ben. If I as much as got a note from him on my birthday, it was heaven. Laura, you've got to believe this. Your father loves you very much. When your mother died, he couldn't keep you with him. It was impossible the way he was moving around all the time because of his work. You should have heard him yesterday. How happy he was talking about the home he was going to make for you and him. Is that for Rick? Yes, he said he wasn't hungry before I thought I'd take it out. May I bring it to him? You said you trusted him. Of course. I wish you were like you, father and me. I can talk to you. There's never been anyone to talk to. I suppose no matter where you are, if you're lonely or miserable, whether you're in prison or... <laughs> a fancy Eastern school. Talk about it so easily. I think you'd want to forget about it. Lie about it, even. In time, you mean? It wouldn't get me no place. Somebody somewhere would turn up who knew me, and I'd have to start all over again. I reckon it's best to face up to it right from the start. But it's so unfair. It's not what you've been that should count, it's what you are. Well, if I hadn't been caught robbing that cash box, I suppose I would have probably figured it was unfair that all I had to show for my trouble was $17. $17? 76 cents. They put you in prison for stealing $17? They put me in prison for stealing, Miss Laurie. Didn't matter how much. The way my father treated you yesterday. It's all right, Miss Laurie. It doesn't matter. Right? Will you take me to the dance Saturday night? What? I know it isn't proper for the girl to ask, but I really would be proud if you'd be my escort to the dance on Saturday night. Oh, no, Miss Laurie. I'd be the proud one. You stop calling me Miss all the time. I'm honored, Lori. Go away. Rick! Rick! 
right out of there and falling on my face. I was hoping I didn't get here quite quick enough this time. Digging post holes all morning. And as empty as a rain barrel. In the uh, <clears throat> well, Hop Singh has uh, got the picnic basket prepared. You two could leave right now. How oh, about it? I have to change first. Well, go ahead, Scoot. She and Rick have been together since breakfast. And it's perfectly all right, but you know, Loki wouldn't care for it, so make it a long ride. Huh? Well, sort of figuring on a nap. Hoss, what's the matter with you? You got a whole afternoon ahead of you, the beautiful young girl? Yeah, that's just a problem. Don't you think she's a little too young? Oh, don't let her hear you say that. No. I'll go get the buggy. Cake and stuff over here. Thank you. I couldn't. Uh oh. Sorry, Mr. Ant, but you're a little late for the picnic. That's funny. <laughs> Seems no matter where you stop to eat, they always show up. Oh, sure they do. They got a system, you know. Yeah. A little guy sits on a little mound, and when he sees a horseman ride by with a picnic basket or a buggy go by with a picnic basket, he sends a signal to another little guy on another little mound who in turn sends it to another little guy on another little mound and so on. You're fooling. What? No. Oh, how else would they know where to go? He must think I'm still coloring picture books. No. No, I don't, Lori. You're... You're almost a grown lady. As a matter of fact, it won't be long till you'll be a grandmother with a shawl around your shoulders and rocking in front of a fireplace. Well, I told you, I like him. We all do. Even though he's a jailbird? Well, that sets him apart a little. The way I figured, he made a mistake and paid for it. He's never lied about his background. He came into town, got a job at the blacksmith shop doing odd chores, and now he's probably one of the best blacksmiths I know. When do people stop remembering? I don't know, Lori. That's, that's hard to say. Well, look, if we're going to see Beaver Tail Falls, we better be on our way, huh? Uncle Ben sent us on this picnic, so I couldn't talk to Rick. That's true, isn't it? Sort of. Yes, I think we'd better be getting back now. He said he'd be in in a minute. Oh, good. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Yeah. It's lovely. Well, we're going to have supper in a little while, if you want to freshen up. I'm going to take something out to Rick first. I already have. Uncle 
Karen? There's something I want to ask you. Yeah. It's about Saturday night, the dance. I want to go. But I know my father wouldn't approve. Uh, Lori, uh, you, you're making your father out to be an ogre. Uh, we're all going to go. No reason why he'd disapprove. I want to go with Rick. Did he ask you? We want to go together. I know if you talked to my father, he'd say yes. Well, I don't know if your father's going to be back in time before the dance. Huh? Well, if he is back in time, will you talk to him? Well, if not, you could give me permission. I'll tell you, Laurie, I, you know, it's, it's not what I think I want. You, your father left you in my charge, and... Well, knowing what he thinks about people who've been in prison... You like I, Rick. Yes, of course I like Rick, but this is different. You no, know, it a... isn't. It isn't. What's the matter with all you old people anyway? You say one thing and you do another. I thought you were different, but you aren't. You're just the same. Well, Laura, you, you, don't, you don't seem to understand. I do, too. I'm not too young. You're all too old, that's all. All you think about is the past. You've forgotten what it's like to have a future. What it's like to be alive, even. Oh, I hope I never get to be like you. What's that book you're reading? History of Brands. I found it terribly interesting last night, but for some reason or other, I just can't keep my mind on it tonight. Yeah. Same with me. Adding up that column of figures. Four tries, four different answers. She sure was upset. Yeah. I didn't hear much of it, but... Just from the little I did hear, she was that. Trouble is, she may be right. I tell you, getting old means getting over cautious, over careful. It's no wonder the young folks won't talk to you. Can't trust your judgment. Paul. Oh. Of course, the root of the trouble here is that she doesn't think your father cares about her. Of course he does. Well, of course he does. Deeply, too. <laughs> Dang fool won't tell her. You gonna talk to him? Yes, I'm gonna talk to him. Her, too. First thing in the morning. Well, I'm going to bed. Yeah. I think I'll join you.
you doing up at this hour? It ain't even light yet. I couldn't leave without seeing you. I had to wait till you were up. Leave? Why? I don't know. They're all too old. They don't understand anything. But you do. We can talk. You and I. Sure, Laurie, but... Please come with me. Neither of us will have to be alone anymore if you come with me. Laurie, you're not alone. You've got your father. My father? My father, what does he care about me? He doesn't care at all. He won't let me do what I want. He won't even let me think what I want. It's like living in prison. Oh, Laurie, you got no idea what prison's like. I knew you were going to say that. But that's what it's like, honestly. Please come with me. I can't come with you. I got a job in Virginia City. You had a job. Do you really think my father's going to let you keep it? Don't you remember how he treated you yesterday? Lori, I've been thinking about something your father said yesterday. About fear. And I reckon the trick is, you gotta learn to stand up to that fear. Maybe next time. Next time? Well, maybe there won't be a next time, Lori. You know, all folks ain't like your father. Oh, but they are. All of them. They're all the same, even Uncle Ben. They're hypocrites. They'll never let you forget about your past because they can't forget about it. Rick, there can be a hole in the world for us, for you and me. Oh, my father will miss me. Lori? You shut your bag. I can't let you go alone. Come on, I'll saddle the horse. That's all I got, and I ain't no horse thief. stage is wondering what will happen when I catch up with him. I wonder, too. Daily journal to be given to my daughter, Laurie, in case of my death. She thinks the father doesn't care. We gotta find Laurie. She's I'll got check the back room. All right. 
Rick's horse is the only other one that's gone. Oh, maybe the riding double. That'll slow them up anyway. Yeah, I'll saddle the horses, huh? No, no. Just saddle mine. I want you here in case I miss Luke and the boys on the road. I'll get my things. All that boy, Ben. Well, you found the grave, Pa, just like Rick said. And this, Billy's gun, his name scratched on the butt plate. When we get back to the Ponderosa, I'm gonna have a little talk with that boy, Ben. Well, I'm afraid you're not gonna be able to. He's not there. What do you mean, he's not there? He's gone, Luke. I can't say as I blame him. I was a little tough on him. I might as well get back to the ranch. Well, Laurie has gone, too. Sometime during the night, they both left. Uh, unless you've got the reward money with you, it's it's missing, too. You let that prison dirt take my daughter. Ben, if any harm comes to my child, how long have they been gone? At least a couple of hours. We hit this road about a mile back. If they're headed for Virginia City, they've already passed the junction. You fellas take the cross the city road. Come on. Why are we stopping? We're off to Ponderosa now. We got some talking to do. Frick, if my father gets. They could be after us right now. Well, it can't be helped, Lori. I mean, us running off into nowhere like this is just plain crazy. Now, my horse can't carry us both forever. We gotta make some plans. Maybe we can catch a stage or something. Fine. Where to? Well, Lori, I ain't got no money on me. What I got's in the bank, and that don't amount to much. I told you I've got money. A thousand dollars. Oh, Lori, you didn't take that from the Cartwrights, did you? Of course not. It's the reward money for Billy Miller, alive or dead. You were the one who knew, so. Here. As far as I know, there was no reward offered. Even if there was, your father or a court would have to hand it out. You've taken this money just the same as stealing it. Don't you see that? No, I don't. Well, you're the one said they'd never forget my past. I reckon this just about guarantees it. Well, who cares? We're going to change our names anyway. I'm taking it back, Lori. I'm taking you back, too. Running away trying to forget everything that ever happened just don't work. Oh, Lori. Sweet little Lori, why don't you grow up? You know, a man can't be just what he wants to be. He's what he's been, what he is, what he hopes to be. Everybody is. So are you. Come here, Laurie. You wouldn't shoot him, Father. Do as I say, while well, you can't move. The boy's not armed, Luke. Luke. Oh, 
sorry. Luke! That's it up now. Luke, did you hear me? What do you want me to do, Marshal? Just let her run off by herself? That's what she was going to do, you know. That's what I'm still fixing to do. Here, the reward money. That's what you really came after, isn't it? No, Lori. I came after you. Oh, Father, stop it. And don't try to send Rick back to prison. I took it. He showed you where Billy Miller was. It belongs to him. Even so, he was going to return it. I don't understand, Lori. Why do you want to leave? No. You don't understand. You wouldn't have to ask why. What difference does it make? You don't care about me. You never have. Lori. You never had any time in your life for me. Ever. You always sending me away, keeping me away. It was all for you, Lori. Everything I did was for you. How could it have been for me? My own father ends up a stranger. He never even wrote me, except maybe once a year. I bet you never even thought about me. Tell her, look. Look, tell her. in your father's bedroom after you left. It's a, it's a daily journal which he wrote for you. To be given to my daughter, Lori, in case of my death. He wrote to you every day. Sometimes a word, sometimes a, a whole page. He thought of you all the time. Why in a journal? Why didn't you put it in a letter? Life hasn't always been pretty for me, Lori. Sometimes, no, most times, the things I put down weren't seemly for a little girl to read. I'm not a little girl anymore. Yes, I know that now. I should have written all along. I should have, but I guess it's a little late to start that now. I read it now. Well, sure, if you want to. It's yours to keep. How well, should we get back to the Ponderosa? If we can find those horses you spooked, Luke. East, they figure California is the place for the future. When I heard that, I thought we ought to look around out there before settling someplace else. That makes sense, doesn't it, Ben? If Laurie says so. Evening, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, hello, Rick. Marshal. Ben here's been telling me that you have hopes of taking over the Smithy one of these days. Well, I hope to, sir. One of these days. Maybe when I get a little something put aside. I deposit a thousand dollars to your account this afternoon. Maybe it'll help. Like Laurie says, it does belong to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, what I came to ask about... Well, I'd like your permission to dance with Laurie, sir. Well, I'd say that'd be up to her. If she wants to, I have no objection. 
Thank you. Well, that didn't hurt too much, did it? No, but it takes some getting used to. How about some more punch? How about something a little stronger? I'm with you. 